Welcome back, friends, to our series on hair. Um, just to introduce and recap if you missed the first one. You know, I was teaching one of my classes this morning, and we just really had to hone in on the hair thing. As you know, hair and faces can really make you dissatisfied with your fashion sketches if you're not happy with the hair and the face on the sketch. In fact, some people even just eliminate the whole hair and face thing, and they just kind of do these like bald bear mannequins like you see in stores sometimes. And that's cute too, but I want you to have choices and I want you to explore and discover. And today I'm gonna to give you my favorite tips about hair because it's a big deal. Uh, the most common approach to hair, as I said in the previous video, is that it ends up looking very spaghetti-ish. Um, it's like you do this beautiful drawing with all these lovely details. And then when it comes to the hair, we start drawing lots and lots and lots and lots of little lines squiggly lines with like the white paper showing through and it just it detracts from the whole illustration today we're going to talk about how your hair can add to your illustration before we start i'm going to let you know that i'm using a pencil and i'm going to use markers on marker paper i was never a big proponent of markers or marker paper but i was teaching the class this week the way i'm required to use marker paper and not only that we're using crayola markers which I was like so upset when I learned that I'd be teaching with Crayola markers because it was for younger kids and we wanted to make it affordable and accessible. But guess what, my friends? <laughs> Since we're using market marker paper, these markers are fabulous. What's marker paper? It's more sheer and thin than regular paper and it doesn't seep through even if you use like Sharpie or whatever, it won't soak through. And so if you buy markers and you use them on marker paper, they will literally um, last longer because they don't soak all into the paper, which is fabulous. Okay, so I'm gonna use the Crayola markers today and I'm gonna tell you because, you know, I could be using Copics or Prismacolors or Chart Pack or any of these fancy smelly pens, but guess what? These are great. <laughs> They're great, and look how the tip goes from thin to thick. And the me the point I wanna make when I use this color, these pens today, is that you don't need to spend more to do better. You just need to do to do better. So here we go, and you're already enough, and you're already good enough, okay? It's just we're always expanding, always growing, always discovering. Why do we have trouble drawing faces? Because of some of our preconceptions about how we look at things. And that's why our discomfort with how we draw hair becomes the door opener to, you know, how to see different and draw better and do things in a new way. So the reason we usually draw spaghetti hair is because we know that hair is strands. We know what it feels like. We have it. We touch it every day. But when we're approaching an illustration, and you're going to start noticing this now that you're going to start learning to do it, I'm going to use this picture of a model from my book, The Language of Fashion Design, 26 Principles Every Designer Should Know. And I'll have that linked around this video most likely as well. Okay, so here we have straight, shiny hair, maybe slightly wavy. Okay, now, before we start, I already fell in love with this picture for sketching right now, but I'm gonna tell you that I want you to sketch from photos. I don't care if it's digital or magazine or book, but what I do want you to be careful of is try to use photos that aren't cropped. You see how this one's kind of cut off? Better that you use an image where the hair is completely intact. And maybe I'll do this model next time. But for starters, I want you to use something that's looking straight at you, not angled like any of these girls yet. Okay? No angles. Looking straight at you and not cropped. You see how the top of her head is a little bit cropped here? Um, ideally, you're not going to have it cropped, but I'm going to use it anyway. Only <laughs> because I had my heart set on this one. Okay, I have to adjust my camera a little. Sorry because where I'm sketching is showing, not showing me. One more second, sorry guys. Try to go the other way. There are so many logistics involved. Okay, thanks for your patience. <laughs> All right, so first thing I do when I'm drawing a face, I start with like an egg shape. Um, now this is already, you can see, 
This is three fingers tall. This is larger than I would actually use on an illustration, right? If I was doing a, a fashion sketch, maybe the head would be two fingers tall, now that I think of it. But I'm gonna go with this larger version. Um, whenever I'm doing a study of a face, I'll sketch out the egg with a pencil. I want you to remember, okay, we're talking about hair, but I'm gonna say a few things about face. I find the top of the head, the bottom of the head, not of the face, but of the head. And I just do with uh, really light lines. So chin, crown, and then the eye levels in the middle. I'm not gonna really get into features on the face, but I'm gonna just map them out a little bit because I'm always more interested when I feel like I'm looking at a person. Okay, the other thing before I start sketching the hair is that I'm also going to, sorry, the light is at the left and my hand is blocking a little. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, next I want to also sketch out a little bit of the neck and shoulders because hair interacts with all those things. So here's her shoulder. And here, her other shoulder is kind of hidden by her hair. So I'm gonna draw it as if there was like an x-ray vision. I'm gonna just draw it as if I could see through. Okay, and then we got something like this. All right, now I'm outlining her face with a stronger line. So I usually start with really light, soft lines and I get a stronger line as I feel more certain. Okay, I'm gonna indicate her ear. I can't see the other ear, right? Her face is centered, her features are centered on her face because she's looking straight at us. And then I want you to make sure you really notice that there's a difference between the head and the hair because this is always a big problem. Um, conceptually, our brain kind of gets in our way. So <laughs> you think it would be helping us, right? <laughs> but once you're aware, it changes everything. So the top of her head is here, but her hairline is literally, right, covering a lot of her face. I can use her eyebrow as a landmark. You know, I can see where her hair is close to her eyebrow. I can follow her hairline, sketching it lightly. I see that she has hair shape here. And you know, using pencil's great because you can put tone in really quick to show areas of darkness before you even add color. Now, what I talked about in video one that I'll mention again is whenever you're um, sketching out the shape of her hair, remember that it's a shape, not hairs. So I'm looking at the contours, the shapes of her head and hair, and I wanna notice things like, how close does this come to her eyebrow? Um, how close does her hair come to her, like from her temple? How wide is it from her temple of her face? So on this side, it's coming right up close to her eye. And what I'm gonna focus on lightly first, then more deliberately, is the overall shape of her hair. Where is it narrowest? See right here is the narrowest kind of measure of her hair. Where is it widest? Oh, there's like two corners here. And I think that's because it's resting on her shoulder actually, which is really cool to observe. The fact is, whenever you draw from a photo or a model and you stop and you slow down, you start getting a little analytical, you start to make all these cool discoveries. Um, there's another wide point right here at her cheekbone where it gets like a little wider. So I'm gonna add that in too because I, I realize that really gives definition to this hairstyle. And then my little sketch lines over here, I don't usually proponent of like erasing but I'm just going to do that to, so this is clearer information for you. Once I have it mapped then I can come in with my contour line which is you know really following the edges of the shape of her hair based on the photo I'm looking at and when I do that guys I really like to use a committed line meaning I promise myself that I won't pick up my pencil and that makes me get really honest and slow down as I, and I don't be surprised if you find yourself correcting yourself while you're drawing. This is beautiful. This is key. I, I always enjoy seeing the process as well in people's drawings. I'm not a huge fan of like super perfect 
airbrushed. I like seeing that the drawing was done by a, a human. That's my aesthetic. I like that there's a human hand built in. You know, it's not for everyone, but it works for me. I'm the same way with music. I like music where I can hear the individual instruments. I don't like it when it's too, too smooth. That's just, that's my aesthetic, right? There's something for everyone. And now I'm just gonna come back to this beautiful top that I chose to include in my book because it was so cool. I can't help it. I'm gonna <laughs> show some of these details. Okay, now back to business with the hair. We're almost there. Before I add tone to the hair, I'm gonna add tone to her skin because you always hear me say this, but I love how the minute you add skin tone, to me, she comes to life. Now, because I'm using water-based markers over pencil, it's smearing the pencil around, which isn't ideal because it sticks to the tip of my marker. But at the same time, if it's making like smudges and shadows, I like to um, kind of play with them use them to my advantage if I can. And another thing is if the, the leaving the eyes white where the whites are can be fun to make sure you also color her neck. And a very common place to have a really good shadow is under her chin. But I'm not going to focus on that. I left some of her lip white because I wanted shine, but now I'm just covering it up. So my main goal is just get a flat tone all over the face. I can always add shadows later. But what I really want to focus on right now is the hair. So we got flat tone for her skin and you can see how she already starts to come to life. And even without me trying to shade or anything, the unevenness and irregularities of the marker are giving her like a vitality and an interest. If you get pencil in your marker, you can clean your marker by uh, scribbling it out to make sure it's clean for the next time you use it. Now her hair looks very black, but since I used black hair for my last video, I'm gonna use a dark brown, okay? So it's gonna look slightly different from the photo, but you're gonna see it's, it's there's a reason why I'm gonna do that way. So now I'm following my photo, looking for hair where I see hair and following, actually let's follow the contours first and I'm gonna tell you why, just to drive that concept home that the way you draw the edges of the shape is integral to the shape itself. Okay, so this is the outline of the shape, which shows the texture of the hair. So this is like super smooth hair with a little bit of a wave. And now I will color that in into one single flat tone. So if I was using digital or if I was using gouache or watercolor, that shape would be like one big wet shape. And again, I'm using marker paper, so um, the marker doesn't absorb into the paper that much, kind of sits on top. So be careful that you don't smudge things. It, it takes like a little longer than if you were using like sketch paper or copy paper where it would soak in. So now, there's a little bit of texture to her hair because of the streaks of my marker, as same as for her skin, but that her hair is still what I call flat. It's a flat tone. I'm so tempted to add color to her dress. I'm sorry. Let's do this just for kicks. I just can't help it. Again, contour. Okay, so what I could tell you right now is that the... Oh, the marker doesn't really match the cap. Uh, I thought it was more of a royal blue, which I love. But anyway, same concept, and I'm glad this happened because that's what I want you to think is hair and clothing, same concept. You don't draw all the threads on the clothes. You don't draw all the hairs on the hair. So it's more of a shape. The edges and wrinkles are what show you texture Right? Same with the hair. Okay, so now back to hair since that's our focus. One thing you can do is try to use the same color for shading, right? Adding a little more pigment can 
Um, I was telling my students this morning, squint when you're looking at your model or your photo. When you squint, everybody squint right now as you look at this. When you squint, the lights and darks become more obvious to you. Look for the areas that are darkest and the areas that are lightest. Now, I was telling my students this morning something that you isn't happening here in this photo, unfortunately, which is usually hair is dark. Well, I better just save that for another example. Yeah, just squint and look for the lightest and the darkest areas. So now I have lighter and darker. See where I layered more pigment over? Okay, but if I was using gouache or something, I usually don't use like brown to shade brown or blue to shade blue. I usually use something darker for shading. So I'll take my base color and I'll mix it with black or dark gray. In this case, I'm gonna use black for those shadows. Hope it's not too strong, but yeah, there's, so there's a shadow here. There's a shadow here, I'm looking at my photo again. There's really, it's really dark here. It's nice to have something very dark right next to her face because it will make her face pop. You'll know what I mean when it happens to you. You'll be like, oh, that just popped. Because when you put something light right next to something dark, there's like a, the lighter thing kind of pops forward, okay? And so again, I'm not drawing hairs. I'm just mapping out the major shapes of the shadows. This is huge. And then for your final touch, now all we have is contour, shape, flat tone of color, flat shapes of shadow based on reality because I'm drawing from an example. I can't help it. I want to put some detail on her face. Okay, I'm using a waterproof pen. If I'd started with a waterproof pen, I wouldn't have had any smudge, but that's okay. I'll draw some wrinkles. Oh gosh, fashion illustration is just too fun, guys. It never, ever gets boring or old, does it? I can do a contour line. I could do this with colored pencil or with my marker. And look how I'm keeping my contour line not touching her hair. That was just a stylistic choice, but isn't that fun? Like, you don't always have to do it like coloring booky where you follow the lines. And then here's the big deal. So we talked about we don't want that spaghetti effect, right? We don't want to draw like lots and lots of hairs. So the trick is that what you can do is just draw a few. Just a few. Kind of show the direction the hair is going in and you're done. And literally, I drew like six hairs. Okay. And then your final tip is honestly, I should wait till this is dry. It's a little bit wet. Same tip is true if I was using watercolor. I'd have to wait for it to be dry. One way I dry is if I have an incandescent bulb, I'll bring my bulb over, like if I have a lamp with an arm on it, I'll bring the bulb over the model space um, and let it, I mean, over whatever I painted to dry it quicker. But anyway, the final tip is, let's look at this and squint again. Don't you see there are some areas of shine? I can take a very light colored pencil. Colored pencils is where you can't scrimp on money. <laughs> um, colored pencils that are very inexpensive can really give you a hard time because they are often very hard and very sheer. You want creamy colored pencils that really show up. See that? I'm putting some shines onto her face. I'm even going to add some shine to her shirt. Of course, if you put shine everywhere at some point, it could perhaps make everything feel kind of flattened out. But gosh, look at the magic of the shine. And then, well, okay, that's everything but the hair. <laughs> so now let me get to her hair. There's a strong shine here. I see it in the photo my reference photo and I see a strong shine like right here that also shows like the direction and the bend of her hair and now I'm just like super happy I'm having that I love fashion illustration moment I'm gonna sign my work and date it as you always should 
because you'll look back at your progress and say, wow, I came such a long way. I'm so proud of myself. And that's the tip for like smooth, shiny, straightish hair. Um, there's going to be more in the series. I think we're going to do an updo and maybe and like a, wa a wavier hair. So stay tuned. Let me know your feedback. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you had success with this. And let me know your questions and things. All right, guys. This is Laura Volpentesta. Oh, also, there are um, free resources on fashionillustrationtribe.com. My website, there's articles, demonstrations. And if you subscribe, you actually get like a goodie bag toolkit of fashion design and drawing resources. That's just for subscribers. Um... Yeah, if you dig around there, you're going to find all kinds of things. Oh, and here's another example of the same technique. Kind of reminding you. Shape, then shadow, then highlights. Okay. So, see how we're getting a shape, adding shadow, and then highlights. Super fun. I suggest that you do a little series of studies from photos you like. So that you can practice and build your confidence up. Confidence up as well as build your vocabulary of, um, well, anyway, <laughs> build your vocabulary of details that you've like done studies of so that you can do them without reference in front of you at a later date. Bye guys.